Welcome back to MFO, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. You know, this episode is 100% compliments of some of my buddies who are chain rats and fish in the Fox Chain Lakes up here in Northern Illinois. And I, I heard from them uh, that they had a banner day out on the chain and they told me what the conditions were. We talked about it and we said, ah, that's, that's something to make sure we share with people on Mark Fisher Outdoors. So we're going to come back and we're going to tell you how they had a great day on the Fox chain and what you can do to replicate that in your neck of the woods when this happens to you. Stick around, guys. <music> Hey, welcome back to Mark Fisher Outdoors, everybody. I'm Mark Fisher. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for hitting that subscribe button. We appreciate it. If you're one of the guys who haven't hit that subscribe button, we'd ask you to go ahead and do that today and become a part of the Mark Fisher Outdoors community. So what I want to talk about is a topic that came to me from a bunch of my buddies on the Fox chain. So these guys gave me a call. They had a great day. I was getting pictures. I'm going to I'm going to put some of these pictures up here. Had a great day on the water and it was like literally a couple of days before Halloween here in Illinois. But we had the conditions were warm. I mean close to 80 degrees and extremely windy. South wind blowing, warm temperatures and these guys really did it right. The thing that we talked about in terms of the conditions were that wind, number one, we've talked about this on the channel. What that wind does is you've got a lake that after the turnover, the oxygen level is kind of dissipated out. Remember, the oxygen is not condensed up at the top any longer. It's turned over, it's kind of dissipated out. Well, with the wind, what it's doing is it's stirring up that water and it's really oxygenating the top part of the water column just because of the fact that there's so much activity, the wind blowing over it and, and churning up the water that it's actually putting more oxygen up towards the top. So guess what? A top water bait was really effective. Now, granted, they had to get to a little bit shallower area where a top water could be worked effectively where the waves weren't crashing over but a top water a zara spook really provided a good bite where they those fish were congregated and they were getting tons of strikes probably 40 fish or so just throwing a top water the next offering that they threw was a chatterbait because they took that wind blown cove that still had some weeds in it working a chatterbait through that area but because the water temperature was being heated by the sun the wave action was oxygenating it you still had some weeds for those fish to be in that again those weeds were a little bit warmer because they were soaking up the the sunlight that was penetrating through the, the relatively shallow water. I'm not going to say shallow, shallow, but relatively shallow. And again, really, really good catches on a chatterbait. My point in, in relaying this story, guys, is there are times in the fall where we'll get that, what they used to call it, that Indian summer where it would be warm. You get a south wind blowing. And all of a sudden... You've got those warm temperatures, that windy condition, and that plays into your favor as an angler from a standpoint of taking advantage of that oxygenation of the top part of the water column. The few weeds that are there, you can actually take advantage of that and target those fish either with top water baits or a bait like a spinner bait or a chatter bait. The other thing that you guys have pointed out in the comments a lot, especially when we did that chatterbait video last week, was rocks. Rocks retain the heat. So just like in the springtime, where we would be focusing on rocks because those are the first 
things to retain heat and hold that heat. In that kind of a situation where that sun is out and the temperatures get a little bit warmer, a rock bank will be another great place to target in the fall when you get those few warm days that, that happen to us uh, you know, every once in a while in the fall. So wanted to share these tips, wanted to share the experiences that my buddies who fish the Fox chain kind of shared with me. And we will see you again tomorrow on another episode of Mark Fisher Outdoors. Take care, everybody.